Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about regex regular expression boundaries. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com, select menu, and regex tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the regex boundaries. Now regex boundaries allow you to assert things about where a token can exist in a search string. Let's imagine for a moment that we want to make sure that the first three characters of a string are actually digits followed by a dash. We would do this using the caret meta character which instructs the regex, regex engine to make sure that the token to the right is the first thing in the beginning of the line. Okay, so for example, if this is our regular expression right here, we have our caret, right? And you don't want to confuse the caret with the negation symbol. That, that would exist if it's inside of, you know, square brackets, which is a character class, right? So at the beginning of a regular expression, this is saying that the token to the right, which happens to be this, but it's not just this, because this is a, of course, a capturing group, right? And this is a predefined character D, which is the digits 0 through 9. But this capturing group has a quantifier applied to it, and that's a quantifier for the exact... Um, basically three repetitions of that, okay? So this makes up the whole entire token right there. So that token must begin it, and then it has to be followed by a dash. So in our search string, 8675309, will return true when invoking the find method because it'll find this at the beginning of the uh, line, okay? Now we can use boundaries to make sure that a token is the last thing to exist in a line as well. We do this by using the dollar sign meta character to make sure that the token to the left is the last thing at the end of a line, okay? So the dollar sign, when it's at the end of a, um, a regular expression like that, that means that the token to the left, and the token to the left is not just this because this is a quantifier, right? Our, our capturing group is paired up with the quantifier there. So this is basically saying we're going to have four digits at the very end of that, right? So the string literal 8675309 will find 5309 being at the very end of the string and will return true when invoking the find method. We can combine both of these, right? Which is the first regular expression plus the second regular expression to validate basically like a seven digit U, uh, United States telephone number, right? 8675309 will return true when invoking the find method, okay? Now another useful regex boundary is the slash slash B or the slash B as you regularly do it with the escape sequence on there, but which you can use to define a word boundary. You might be going, well, what's a word boundary? Well, let, let me give, let me explain that by example here. So we have our slash slash b here, and then we have our slash slash b here, and then we have the word car right in here, right? So your car is being towed. Now car is essentially its own word right here, right? In other words, it's not sandwiched in as part of a word. Now the white space doesn't necessarily have anything to do with determining it. In other words, there's not like a slash slash s car slash slash s. It would return the same result, but that's not what a word boundary is. It's like its own independent word if you're surrounding it with the lowercase b's. That'll return true when invoking the find method. All right, let's check out something else here. In this particular string literal, using that same reg, reg x, I got goldfish are members of the carp family. We have the word car but it's not as its own word. It's part of a larger word, which is carp, right? So if we do the same regex um, with the word boundary and then the string literal car followed by the word boundary, right? That will return false when invoking the find method because car is not its own word, right? It's not its own independent word. All right, let's take a look at another example here. Now I have a scar on my leg. So in this particular case, Car is, is like in a part of the word scar. So invoking the same regu regular expression will return false because once again, car is not its own independent word. One more example to just drive this home here. So same regular expression, I get that scarf looks warm. Car is nested right in the middle of the S and the F as part of scarf, right? That's not its own independent word. So it returned false when invoking the find method. All right. so. Finally, another commonly used regex boundary is the slash slash uppercase B, which you can use to define a non-word boundary. You might go, what's a non-word boundary? Well, once again, I'll demonstrate it here to you. 
So using the regular expression, right, we've got a word boundary here and then the string literal car and then a non-word boundary right here. If we use that regular expression to search that pattern there on goldfish or members of the carp family, this will return true because guess what? Car starts off as its own independent word there, right? And then um, after that, it's it's not it's part of a it's part of another word as a matter of fact, right? So we can start it off as its own independent word and then finish it as part of another word. Okay, so that'll return true there. Now the same thing here. I have a scar on my leg where it starts off as part of another word and it ends as its own word. It ends it could end as its own word, but it's part of a larger word. But we can start this off as a non-word. And then, of course, car, the string literal, and then end it as its own word, okay? So it ends as its own word, but it begins as part of another word, all right? And that's one way to explain it there. Now, if we do two non-words on car here, right, and then it will come back on this particular string literal, and that scarf looks warm, right? Because it's, it's, um, it's not its own independent word, it's completely surrounded by other letters on each side. It's part of the non-word boundary, right? So using the uppercase non-word boundary, um, I guess you call them meta characters or predefined characters, whatever, will return true when invoking the find method. Now there are other rarely if ever used regex boundaries that I am going to leave out of this tutorial. I really just want to introduce you to the boundaries that you will see and use on a regular basis. Now there are many thick books that go into the fine details of the regex language, but in a real world, real world scenario, and I'm just guessing, but I'm gonna say about 25% of the regex language gets used about 95% of the time. There's a lot, a lot of stuff in the regex language that you know never gets used, or if it does, it gets used like maybe once or twice in your whole entire career for some off the wall type search thing or whatever, you know, so. But anyway, so that's what I'm saying here. I'm just gonna teach you like the, the biggest, baddest, baddest stuff that you're going to use on a regular basis, not those fine little details there. After all, this is a Java tutorial, and of course regular expressions are supported through the pattern and matched classes, so it's important to go over them, but not to the level of detail that you would go that you that you would go into if you're really just going to be like come like some serious regex person where you use them all the time. So but anyway, with that being said, let's go down and come down here and highlight all the source code here. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm gonna move my browser off screen. I have a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, C and D next and finish. It's just that easy. Let's open it up. If you're new to my tutorials, type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command, and you'll see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing and configuring the Java development kit. You wanna make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CD, CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD is short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm gonna make a directory with the MD command called Java, and I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. And change directory is a Java folder. I'm gonna make a directory here called uh, regex boundaries. Okay, we'll change directories to that folder, and we'll notepad regex boundaries, not Java. Okay, regexboundaries.java is the name of my source code file, also known as a compilation unit. Control V to paste. Let's come up here and save this right off the bat. Now I'm using my, if you've been watching my other tutorials, I'm using my display find static method here, right? Where we take in a regular expression and the string to search. We search it in uh, case insensitive and then we display, you know, what sort of finds that we get as, you know, invoking the find while we keep looping, we'll display what sort of Results we get back by invoking the group command, a group method there. So, or we'll display, hey, no matches found. So, let's go ahead and come up here, save this, take it line by line, clear our screen, Java C to compile it, Java to run it. <coughs> okay, our first one, right, using what we talked about up here, which is the caret, and when it's at the beginning here, that means that basically. The next token, which is in fact this, and the quantifier must be basically three digits long, right? And then followed by a dash. So we do get 867 dash when we invoke that particular one there. Now the next one, it's fairly simple. We have our dollar sign at the end over here, which means everything to the left of that. 
the token to the left of that, which is in fact basically like this right here, this capturing group with the digit, right? And we need four of them based on this quantifier here. So that combined there, we're gonna have to end this whole entire string with four digits and we get 5309 returned back there. Combining both of them, we get found 8675309 in the 8675309. So that is our regular expression for say validating a seven digit phone number, sep well three separated by a dash, separated by four, typical seven digit phone number for US there. So um, if we try something like uh, four digits dash three digits, of course we're getting no matches found on that. So that's all fairly simple and straightforward on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll up on this here. <clears throat> and let's go into some of the boundary stuff here now. So uh, word boundary here, uh, car, right? We turn, we basically get uh, car, uh, regex basically has slash v car slash v, right? Don't forget about the escape character, escape sequences here, right? Found car in your car is being towed, right? So car is its own independent word here, right? When I say independent word, you might look at it and go, oh, well, okay, that means it's surrounded by spaces and that's not correct at all. Take for example, the next one here, where we have the same regular expression and we use the string, that was your car, right? Now look at that, it found car in there too as well. Even though you can see car has a space to begin with, but it's the end of the, um, it's the end basically of that string literal. So that means it is still its own independent word, right? Even though we don't have a space afterwards, it's its own independent word because there isn't any other characters following it. Now conversely, if we use that same regular expression and we started off car spelled backwards as rack, right? And so car here has a space after the R, but it's its own independent word, even though there's no space or anything like that because that starts off there. So using that same regular expression, we'll find car spelled backwards as rack, okay? All right, so um, <clears throat> now on the next three here, we get no matches using that same regular expression for goldfish are members of the carp family, and that's because carp is not its own independent word. Car is not its own independent word. It's part of, of carp, right? In this particular case, car is part of scar. And in this particular case, car is part of scarf, Right, and so all of those say no match is found for that, okay? Now, um, on, on this one right here, 99, well, basically we'll do like, for example, we've got our, um, our word boundary, right? And then I'm just doing a uh, capturing group, the number nine, and then a two, and I could have just done the number nine with two, but that's no big deal. I just wanted to show you guys various, various different ways of doing everything there, right? But basically the two is the quantifier two. So we have two 99s as part of, a 99 as part of its own separate word there, right? So 99 beginning over here is, is great there. And the next one, we got a word boundary followed by the number one, followed by the number nine. And then that uh, has the quantifier three, so we have three nines applied to it. So in the um, string literal tonight, we're gonna party like it's 1999, right? It goes ahead and founds, finds 1999 in there, okay? So that's, that's pretty much the word boundaries there. Now let's talk a little bit, uh, finish this up real quick there. It's not, not the longest tutorial. Normally I ramble on for quite a while here, but this one's pretty quick there. Let's talk about how to find the non-word boundaries, right? So we've got a word boundary here, car, right? In other words, car starts off as its own independent word, and then it can be part of something uh, to finish it up there, right? So um, for that particular one there, it found car and goldfish are members of the carp family, right? And then, then over here, we've got our non-word boundary starting off car, right? And it says, I have a scar on my leg. That will find car and I have a scar on my leg. It's a part of scar. And then of course, two non-word boundaries surrounding the string literal car there. Um, that scarf looks warm, found car and that scarf looks warm, okay? So um, those really are the, just the most common boundaries that you're going to be using there. You know, beginning, uh, end, and word boundary, and non-word boundary there. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that, get rid of that. I don't really have any final thoughts on this one here, but um, that pretty much uh, concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.